Well, hi everyone, this is John Jay. Thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna to talk about why and how to buy loose diamonds. Why would you? And so I've got a screen share up here and I've just, this is from an article I've written a long time ago. And I just wanna, this is an introduction. I'm not gonna go into so much detail, but let me just skim over some things I'm going to share with you, I, the profile I created and I'll explain what that is. Um, a loose diamond, you know, it, it's, a, it's the you know, hardest substance known to man, right? It's formed at the base of volcanoes. Now we can make them, right? We have machines that can, that can make diamonds to, that are just as good as the ones we find in nature. And uh, it goes on from there. Now I have statistics, as you can see. Um, this research, I went, I got uh, the 10 year period, it's data from 2003 to 2013. So the data is 20 years old, let's say. It was from a 10 year period, 10 years, ending 10 years ago. The, I would say that the, uh, the data is still accurate. You can do some more research on your, on your own, but look, here's what I came up with. Now, we have to understand a few things. Diamonds are graded. So they have, they, they're graded, and so they could, uh, the, the value could be assessed, right? And so there's, there's rating uh, methods and there's rating organizations that have certain credibility. And I, I have this here in my article, and the criteria under which diamonds are rated are known as the four C's, the color, clarity, uh, was carrot weight and cut, okay? This I explain, and there's a, there's a numbering system that explains all the different aspects of these, the color, the clarity, okay? Now, I'm just gonna show you how to find these through a broker. This is a retailer. Uh, I would suggest that you don't buy if you're going to do this for holding money somewhere, and the reason why I'm, I'm talking about this is because uh, many people have asked me uh, for alternatives to storing money outside the banking system, and there are many. This is just one of them. Um, so it's the it's the clarity, the cut, the what else? Um, I always the color, color clarity, cut, and the carrot weight, right? Now, I have two categories of what I suggest. To, to be the ones you want to look at. I'm going to suggest that you purchase the round diamond. Okay, they're called round brilliant. You're looking right now at my, my uh, profile. When I say 8% profile based on my research, this diamond here would give you an 8% return on your money. So it's kind of like buying precious metals. Now, the 10-year the ten period that I described here from 2003 to 13, it did produce this type of diamond that I'm highlighting here. It did produce 8% returns. Now, I like 8%, and I like to have, if I'm going to have more diamond, if I'm going to have diamonds in my, my, let's call it my savings, okay, my precious metals, my cryptos, and my loose diamonds, let's just say, okay, if I'm going to, in my cash, so I'm going to, I'm going to have my 8% profile is going to be a larger portion of my portfolio or my holdings or my savings than it's going to be the 16%. Now, the 16% sounds attractive, right? I'm going to make more money, but again, like anything else, it's, it's um, higher risk. So you have to decide how you want to do this. So what I did is I figured what's going to get the 8%, and so it's going to be the round brilliant. They're both round brilliant, so we can compare apples to apples, right? So in the 8% profile, the color is going to be a D or E rating. I'll get to that in a second. And then you have these other abbreviations here. Now, the VS1 stands for uh, very slightly occluded or included. You'll see in a second. And then VVS is very not, not very sophisticated. It's very, very slightly. And that's a, a rating of two. And then so forth and so on, okay? Um, this one is internally flawless, IF. Right. So this is the higher clarity, the highest clarity you can get is IF. And then of course the carrot weight, I like to have a one, one carrot. It's just nice to keep track of. Okay. Now I did put up to here between one and 2.99. So that's in the 8% profile, something to look at. Um, and the type of cut is going to be very good ideal or a signature ideal. Okay. But we'll, I'll get into these terms in a second. And of course, your 16% profile, the color is going to be better. It's still E, but this time it's EF, not DE, right? And then I've got this rating here, but my, my size is, big, is twice as big, okay? And then here we go. So 
The service I use is, it's a retail website, Blue Nile. Blue Nile Diamonds, right? BlueNile.com. And I'm going to go there right now. You see here. And with this, I just went to the one part of the site where you can actually find what it has. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is the way to go and go start buying. What I, what I would suggest is that you look into the supply chain of your diamonds. And you, what you're going to do is, ideally, you want to go to the cutter. But you're probably not going to be able to do that because the cutter won't talk to you unless you have a big order. But he still probably doesn't want to talk to you. He wants to talk to, bro to brokers. So you're going to have in your supply chain, before you get to Blue Nile, for example, Blue, Nile's, uh, Blue Nile is like your golden diamond source, right? Uh, your retailer, your local jewelry shop. This happens to be online. What you want to do is go up the supply chain to close to the cutter. You want to get to the top, and the guy that's just after the cutter, the broker that's after the cutter. Because you've got the broker that's after the cutter who's buying in probably larger volumes from many other brokers. And then you got the next broker and possibly two more brokers, let's just say. So this is what you want to do. You want to get up that supply chain to get a better pricing. And the benefit to, to the broker to work with you is because you're going to be a good buyer. Right? And I'll show you why. I'll show you what you're going to do. So let's just say we're looking for, I don't even know the pricing here. We'll, we'll figure it out. But let's just throw some numbers in here. We want, to, we want to set up a profile of what we're looking for. So let's just say we're looking for the 8% profile, right? And I don't know, maybe it's going to be, it doesn't matter, $2,000 to thirty. We can just put $2,000 to $6,000. And then the max, let's just put our profile in there. This is, what, this is why I put the profile together, right? Now, there, notice how this gives you a graphic chart. So I can actually do this, right? So there's all kinds of ways to use this uh, software. It's kind of nice. So the color, again, on our profile, let's go back, is going to be D and E. So let's go back to D and E, and I'm going to dial this over to D and E. That's the range D and E, right? And then we got carrots, already got that in there. The clarity is going to be VS1, VVS2. So let's do this. Clarity is going to be VS1, VVS2, VVS1, IF, right? If I remember correctly. And then very good ideal signature is the cut. Go back here. Very good ideal. We'll take out good, ideal, and they call it aster. <laughs> so that's probably going to be that, right? So there's our profile. We scroll down. Let's open this up a little bit. Scroll down and look at, they have, look, this is the list. They have eight diamonds fit that criteria. Now I'm sure they can get you more, but sometimes they have like 400. It depends on what you're looking for. So. Look at these are all round, brilliant, and here are your prices. Now imagine, imagine a five thousand dollar bill doesn't exist, right? But a loose diamond that's worth five thousand dollars today might be worth seven thousand dollars in a few years. Who knows? I just made up a number. But I'm just saying. You see here. So look, if you had, if you want to put some cash away, in and you get these round, brilliant diamonds. Let's say you buy all eight of them, right? You got what? Five. That's that's ten thousand. That's eleven thousand. That's twenty-two thousand. Uh, you're looking at thirty, forty thousand dollars right there. Okay. Now this is very liquid. Diamonds are very liquid. I would expect you can break even mostly. You just want to get out of the banking system, right? I mean, I've seen orders here where I could, I could easily pay a million dollars for for diamonds. Um, you know, it depends on what, what you have a stomach for. Okay. So I just want to introduce you that to that concept. Now that is how you get them. Why would I want to do that? Well, a diamond doesn't burn in a fire. A diamond is very small, lightweight. In fact, I can cross borders with it in a cup of coffee. I can put my diamonds in a cup of coffee and cross borders. I could put them in my mouth. I could put it in my pocket. I could mail it somewhere. I could, you know, huh, it's a diamond. There's a lot of things I can do with a diamond that would conceal it. I can store it in my home in a very secure location, which is probably make it so secure I wouldn't even be able to find it. So to that extent, diamonds are very easy to secure. They're very easy to transport and they're extremely liquid. Now, I'm not saying that that means you could go spend them at your local grocery store, obviously. And I'm not saying that you would want to go take them to the pawn shop or a retail jeweler. <laughs> but when you have a relationship, and this is what I'm talking about, you have a relationship with the type of broker that you can work with, they become very, very liquid so that you want to be able to buy and sell. Okay? That's what your broker is going to do for you. He's going to get you the right pricing, but he's also going to be able to liquidate as you need to.
because he probably always has customers and then you could be a supplier and you could also be you know, a customer. Just something to think about. But this may be something you want to look into. Hey, loose diamonds, loose diamonds. Um, you want to avoid anything that's considered blood diamonds. There are certifications that they're not used in conflict. You know, they're called conflict diamonds, things of that nature. We're not going to see that too much here in the stage. You might see that if you try to get into some uh, you know, exotic type uh, stones. But I just showed you a very simple way to do this. So you get the idea. That's loose diamonds. Have fun investigating that. If you learn something new, share it with me. Uh, certainly, um, we can uh, we can talk about this more uh, on all the certifications. In fact, we can probably do some research and find out who the players are in this industry if you want, and uh, probably work out a pretty good deal. In fact, if you want to work with some, a few other people, I'm sure we can get some pretty good pricing uh, with some brokers. And you wouldn't have to commingle anything, but we have some weight if we work together. All right. Hope you enjoy that. Thanks for listening.